Because we're talking about the children of God. We're talking about three armies converging against them. We're continuing with the message. If you want to read it, you go to uh, 2 Chronicles 12. But if you stop down, the fourth thing is you have to admit to the Lord you need help. Can I tell you this? He will let me carry it as long as I want to. Even if I'm going down to the knees and even crawling. He'll let me carry it. And I thought to myself, Lord, why? Why am I putting all this stress on me? And the Holy Spirit says, is that your church? No. He says, whose church is it? I said, yours. He said, well, let me take it then. And I tell you right now, everybody in this church, you think you let God down. Well, you know what? You didn't pick Him up. Say that again. Yes. Everybody in here thinks you let God down. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't pick him up to begin with. See, he don't look at frivolous things like that. He just looks at love, and he looks down at what you're going through, and he wonders why don't you just point your head upward, lift up your eyes from whence cometh your help, raise up your hands from your help cometh in the Lord, and ask Him for help. Can I add an inch to my height? Can I turn my hair from gray back to brown? No. Can't breathe. I'm worse than a woman. I know my hair doing my beard changes all the time. I'm just trying to keep it real for the devil so he don't know what it look like. I'm hoping I'm on the ten most wanted in hell's post office. Come on. Three of them's me. Different pictures. <laughs> I'm telling you folks, I've been... I don't want to struggle. And I don't have to struggle. Because the Lord said, I'll take it. You know, we say these Scriptures all the time, but sometimes we have to look up and say, you know what, we know the Scriptures, we just ain't doing it. He said, cast your cares on the Lord. Yeah. How many has got cares this morning? And those cares weight you down. Right. Casting them, them cares upon Him. That don't mean just come lay it at His feet. That means throw it at Him. I don't want it anymore. I don't want it. Because we, we like to hold on to our cares. Amen? We like to hold on to our cares. But that's alright. I began to see. Well, Lord, you're trying to you're trying to talk with for me because sometimes I like to be strong for other people. And sometimes that's hard. Amen. We've got to realize our limitations and realize God's unlimitations. I don't know if that's a word, but I think I just made one up. Unlimitations. Right. The fourth principle in winning the battle of life is to admit you need help. Je Jehoshaphat did just that when he said this. This is 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, verse number 12. We are powerless before this great multitude who are coming against us. Nor do we know what to do but our eyes are on you. Yes. Now listen, I want you to get this. This is talking about God's people has an enemy coming against their soul. Who is our enemy? We talked about it last week. Satan. Amen? There is an enemy that is coming after us today. And we, like Jehoshaphat, has to admit to the Lord... God, this army's too big. I can't do anything about it. I don't know what to do. But our eyes are on you. Yes. Sometimes life gets pretty difficult 
And we've got to keep our eyes on the Lord. Amen? Amen. We've got to keep our eyes focused this morning. Focused upon the Lord. We've got to say to Him, Lord, I've got things in my life that I cannot do by myself. Will You help me? And then ask Him in faith. That's after you done come in and praised and worshipped Him a little bit. Then you come. He said it. Make your petitions known. Who are we making them known to? God. Brother Todd, don't God know it? Yes, He does. But He wants to make sure that you're giving Him that that He deserves. Yeah. The credit. I'm here this morning pastoring this church because of God's grace and mercy, not because of who I am. Because of His grace and His mercy today. I went over a little bit of this, but I'm just going to reiterate it here. There's only one kind of person that God cannot help, and that is a person who does not call on the Lord. You have not because you ask not this morning. When you say, Lord, I've got a problem. I need help. I admit my inadequacy, and then He can work through that. See, I think this morning what people have a difficulty with in today's society and today's church is everybody's wrestling to who deserves the glory. The pastor, the church, the people in there. But we've taken the glory away from God. And you know what the Lord said? I will not dwell in the midst of flesh. In that battle for the glory and the anointing of God. Let me tell you something, friend. If God speaks into my life, if God speaks into my circumstance, if God speaks into my situation, if God speaks into my family, things will change. It's not they might. It's not they can. Things will change. I've had a whole lifetime trying to develop my family into the perfect family. But you know what I have come to the conclusion? Quit trying to be perfect. Quit trying to be perfect. Because what happens is we become so wrapped up in becoming perfect then we become judgmental. Your help is in the Lord today. We say this. The Christian life is a supernatural life. And we need God's power to live it. The Christian life is a supernatural life. And we need God's power to live it. I always say it like this. We can bring the natural into this building. But only God can bring the super. Amen. And folks, we don't need just another stirring up. We need a supernatural outpouring of God's Spirit in this house to mend up the bind up, to take broken hearts, to save the lost, to heal the sick, to deliver the oppressed, to get back to the business of the church. We've got to have that supernatural power moving in this place. We can't live it in our own because we have a power shortage. God is willing to help, but if we are too proud to ask for it, He will, he will not help us. Before I read the Scripture, I want to tell you, when you try to handle it without Him, you have pride. When you try to handle something without God, you have pride. But I recognize my inadequacy and what does that do? It causes me to humble myself before the Lord. Thank God if you humble yourself before the Lord, He said, I will lift you up. Yes. He will lift you up. And can I tell you today, He can lift you to a place where the enemy cannot reach you. Amen. Just, just saying, God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. James 4, 6. 
I'll have to say this because I was listening to a minister this morning, and as I went by the, uh, as as he was preaching, and he made a reference of the identity in Christ, and then he put over Christian performance. I want you to pay attention to this. Identity in Christ, and then on the other side, put Christian performance. Now, which one is greater in your life? Identity in Christ or Christian performance? I want to make an observation to you right now of what the Lord showed me about that statement right there. Identity in Christ or Christian performance? Which will have more power? That that's in Christ or that that's in the Christian? It's, now, I understand that He can move and will move through us. But if we don't understand our, our identity in Christ, it don't matter how much Christian performance you have, you will not be able to do what you need to do for God. Yes. And the church today, we need to realize that the identity in Christ is greater than Christian performance. Does that mean that we should not strive to do everything we should do? No, that's not what I'm saying. Christian performance is prayer. It's the reading of God's Word. It's the things that we are to do every day of our life. Amen? It's the things that we are... Uh, that, that God would require for us to do as His children. That's our Christian performance. But if I learn my identity in Christ... I can walk into places I've not been able to walk into just through prayer and the reading of God's Word. Because if I come in to God's house, you make a determination right now when I come into God's house. Am I going to come into God's house as a servant of God? Or am I going to come into God's house as the Son of God? And the daughters of God. I'm not talking about Christ. I'm talking about us. We are the sons and the daughters of God. When I come in as a servant, a servant usually bows their head because they have no rights. They have no authority in the house. But when I come as a child of God... I have a ring on my finger. I have shoes on my feet. Yes, hallelujah. I have a robe on my back. There's a signet saying I belong to God. I'm a child of God. If I come into God's house with understanding that, I'll not come in timid. I'll not come in with my head down. I'll not come in wondering, uh, you know, if I've got a, what it takes to be where I am in God. Let me tell you something this day. God's placed you where you are and He's put in you what you need. Now live. Now live. Now live. Hallelujah. I know it gets hard. Well, you know what? The Lord reminded me of this. He will not put more on you than you're able to bear. Yes. But with that, He will make a way of escape. Yes. A way for us to get out of that temptation. <coughs> But I want to tell you this, and I want everybody, you can think about your own life, you can think about your own circumstances, your own situation, but whenever I think about that, that what God has done for me, my goodness, and now He wants to call me Son, that just, that makes things different. I don't know about you, but I'm not just a servant in the house, I'm the heir to the King. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The promises of God. The outpouring of God's Spirit. If I can go a little bit further down. Hallelujah. The next point. Five. Now, you must rely on God's power. Did you notice that after Jehoshaphat admitted, Lord, I don't know what to do, he added, but our eyes are on you. 
The fifth principle in overcoming life's battle is to rely on God's power. We need to get our eyes on the Lord. Too often we get our eyes on everything else. On everything except the one who can solve our problems. Circumstances are like a mattress. If you're on top, you may rest easy. But if you're underneath, you might suffocate. Anybody's life felt like that at times? Praise God. Hallelujah. How many knew that life was like a mattress? Hallelujah. Everybody thought it was like a box of chocolates. <laughs> All right, let's go a little bit further. If we keep our eyes on the Lord, we'll stay on top of the circumstances. I had a minister ask me one time, he says, how are you doing? I said, pretty good under the circumstances and I never left. I've never forgot about this and I use it every chance I get. He asked me, what are you doing under there? And he was right. What are you doing under your circumstances? Climb out from underneath those babies and call on top of them. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. They're your circumstances, but you serve a God that is bigger than your circumstances. If you want to focus on the circumstances, you'll be sitting there the same time next year. But if you get your eyes off of the things you go through and on to the Savior, on to the God that made the universe, He can move it if He needs to. He can take care of our lives, whatever we're in need of. Amen. And all He said is, do this. Just ask. And you know what we do as mature Christian people? There's got to be more to it than that. Come on now. That's easy. Folks, anybody? It... Go back to pride. Some of us don't like to ask for help. Amen? That's a form. Form of pride. But Lord, I'm going to ask you for it. I'm going to ask you for it. What I need. What I'm in need of. Why? Why should I want to struggle while I'm walking this Christian walk when God has everything I need? Why do I want to live in poverty if God owns a cattle of a thousand hills? Yes. Why, why do I want to have to sit there and, and worry about things that God said if you seek first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, all, all, all these things shall be added unto you. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. If we go down just a little bit further. If we keep our eyes on the Lord. Keep our eyes on the Lord. If something tries to get your attention, Keep your eyes focused on the Lord. This next one is the sixth thing. And I probably got more notes on this one than I have any other point. Relax in faith. Notice how God responded to Jehoshaphat's prayer. In 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, verse number 15 says this, thus, thus says the Lord to you, do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude. And here's what I want everybody to em, just to uh, emblazon on your heart today. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Yes. <laughs> That's the key right there. Every time you face something in your life, you say the battle's not mine, it belongs to God. You know why we do that? Because if we give Him the recognition that He deserves, we'll take it to Him in prayer. We'll take it to Him as we ask, as we believe, as we receive this morning. For the battle's not yours. It belongs to God. The sixth principle is in overcoming life battle is to relax in faith. So many Christians today are totally worn out because they're trying to fight God's battle in their own power. When we first become Christians, we tend to thank God. You don't know what a deal you got when you got me. I'm going to bring in your kingdom single-handedly. I'll go out and win the world and really help you. 
So we work really hard, but eventually come crawling back on our hands and our knees saying, Lord, I know I've really disappointed you. I'm so sorry. I've really let you down. But then the Lord says, you wouldn't hold me up. You wouldn't hold me up. Let me tell you something, friend. Can I tell you how many times that my children has let me down? I didn't keep track. I don't know. There's a bunch of them. But I never stopped loving them. It never changed the, my heart towards them. Amen. I said this a couple of weeks back talking about Scripture and people quote this all the time. They say God helps those who help themselves. But the truth of the matter is God helps those who can't help themselves. And once again, I want to just inter interject this in. I'm not telling you not to try or not that we shouldn't do our best. But because we should try, we should give it our best effort. We should also realize that without God's power, we have no power on this situation at all. Sisters Rhonda used this scripture a couple of Sunday nights ago. Jesus said it this way, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit from apart from me. You can do nothing. Yes. If you take the branches away from the vine, what do you have? Dead branches. Kindling. Sticks. That's what you have. But Jesus says, I'm the vine and you're the branch. You don't have to break the tie. You don't have to break that life source. But praise God, He can abide in us and we can abide in Him. Don't you thank the Lord for that abiding peace yes, yes. right now? Hallelujah. God wants us to relax and to have faith and let Him work in the situation. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Colossians 2.6 In other words, just the way you become a believer, be sure to live the Christian life the same way. You didn't become a Christian by working really hard, by promising to be perfect, by doing all kinds of good things, by doing all kinds of works for the Lord. You became a Christian by trusting in the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that salvation is not of works lest any man should boast. It is by the grace of our God through the sacrifice of His Son Jesus. Yes. We've come to Him and we say, Lord, I believe in You. I trust You. I give myself to You. Now let me live for You. But in the midst of all that, we have to say, Father, Forgive me. Forgive me for pride. Forgive me, Lord, for not wanting to have humility. Forgive me, Lord, of allowing the stress and pressure of life to get into my life and into my heart and into my thinking and my thoughts, Lord. It will shipwreck our faith, church. I said it will shipwreck your faith if we let those things get in our heart. It's by the grace of God through the sacrifice of Jesus. The Christian life is a walk of faith. If God says He'll take care of it, He will. I want to ask you, I'm using a lot of Sister Rhonda's Scripture today that she said in church, but I think it was last Sunday night she said that Jesus came walking by the disciples and would have passed them by unless they called out to Him. And they called out to Him. And He, and he come to where they were. How many knows that sometimes God's just waiting for us to call Him? He's passing by. Let me ask you this question. Has God ever broken His promise to you? No, never. So relax and allow Him to be in charge. 
I'm not telling you not to pray. I'm not telling you not to get the Word of God out. I'm telling you in the midst of your circumstance, in the midst of your trial, relax and let God's Spirit do His work while the Father does His work and the Son does His work. Yes. Amen? And sometimes I've got to remove myself out of it, just back up to get a breath, to breathe. But that's okay. If you have to back up from it to get a good breath, because you don't want to pass out while you're engaged. Amen? Praise God. We, we, we can't allow the enemy to overwhelm us. We can't let the things of life become bigger than God in our life. Amen? Okay. A little bit further. This for me is the hardest lesson to learn. That is because I want to be in charge. I want to do things my way. I've spent a lot of time running around trying to win this battle. But notice what God says to Jehoshaphat. He says, You need not fight in this battle. Station yourself, stand, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, verse number 17. It says to stand firm. When you've got a problem, when you're facing a battle, when you're in a crisis in life, it's a mental attitude of quiet confidence that says, I'm going to trust God. If He has promised you that He will take care of it. He will do it. Amen? Yes. You must have that confidence. Yes. You must have that confidence. Seventh thing. Thank God in advance. Seventh principle, principle in conquering life's battle is to thank God in advance for giving you the victory. The story of Jehoshaphat is fascinating because the way in which the battle was won, after he consulted the people, he appointed men to sing to the Lord, to praise God for His loving kindness. Now get the picture of what is going on here. There's these two mountains and a valley in between. The battle's going to take place in the valley. On one mountain are three enemy armies just waiting to devastate the Jewish people. On the other mountain are the Jews led by Jehoshaphat. He tells his people, here's God's battle plan. All of those that can sing in the choir, I want you to get out front in the, in the army. I want you to lead the battle. That was what God spoke. So they go marching into battle with the choir in front of the army singing praises to God. Who would fight a battle like that? Wouldn't you put your best soldiers out front? Wouldn't you let your strong, strongest men lead the way? Well, let me tell you what God's plan is. Just be obedient to Him. Yes. Just be obedient to Him. Be obedient to the Lord. And listen... You don't think the people that he put out front that was going to sing at the front of that army, that was who God wanted. So that was the strong people God had ordained. Amen? Sometimes we look at things in this life as weak, but it's really strong in the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is God's, God's battle plan. He wanted the choir out front. Did God's plan work? The Bible tells us that three enemy armies got confused and end up killing each other. They defeated themselves. All God's people had to do was to divide up what the spoils of the battle was. They didn't even get in the battle. You send these out in the front of the battle. You take the army. And while they're marching out, they're getting ready to do what God spoke to them. God calls them to become confused on the other side. And they all defeated themselves. And we're over here saying, I told you it wasn't our battle. 
I told you it wasn't our battle. I'm telling you this morning, it's not your battle. It's not your battle, folks. It's not your battle. What you're going through, it's not your battle. The Lord said it belongs to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. But He'll let you carry it as long as you want to. You ever thought, why'd God do it that way? It's a visual object lesson to teach us to praise Him in faith even before the victory. Praise Him even before the battle. Even before we fight. We need to praise God. When God gives us a promise, we need to praise Him because a promise from God is a sure thing. Amen? Here's the final outcome of the battle. The Bible says when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take their spoil, they found much among them, including goods, garments, and valuable things, which they took from themselves more than they could carry. And they were three days taking the spoil because there was so much. That's 2 Chronicles chapter number 20 and verse number 25. When God is listened to and we obey what He tells us to do, there's going to be blessings that are going to be bountiful in our life. Amen? I can tell you this. If they just had three armies to kill one another because they got disoriented, as we look at that, three days to go through all of the wreckage, the rubble. And for three days, they collected gold. They collected garments, beautiful things, food, Everything that was there, it would now belong to them. God said it this way. If you let me fight your battles, I'll make sure not only will the battle be won, but there will be a reward and a treasure for what you do. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't think you're doing it in vain, church. You're doing it because there's going to be a reward one day. There's going to be a reward one day and we're going to experience that that God had promised throughout all eternity the, the bountiful blessings I don't know about you I, I would like to say it this way I'm ready for some blessings yes amen I said I'm I'm ready for some blessings. Amen. The last thing is this, and I kind of wrote this down just on the fly this morning because I come across it at the very end. 2 Chronicles chapter number 20 and verse number 26. It says, Then on the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Berica, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore they had named that place the Valley of Baraka. I'm sorry, that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Until this day. That's Second Chronicles chapter number 20 and 26. And that word, Baraka, means blessings. That was the place where the battle was. It means blessings and it means on bended knee. The last thing is, after the battle's won, after you receive the blessings that God has for you, recognize that in that place, do not forget to get on your knee and to say, Lord, thank you for this battle. Thank you for this victory. Thank you for your promise. Is yea and amen. If we could, let's stand to our feet right now. Hallelujah. 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 You know, the wonderful thing about the Lord is this morning, He knows where you are. He knows what's going on. He's aware. But He 
was wanting to know this morning, are you willing to go to Him in faith and say, Lord, I need you to help me with this. For regardless of whatever reason, whatever problem that we've never taken it to the Lord, but this morning, I want to be able to surrender myself unto the Lord. I want to be able to surrender myself to His will and to His way. And sometimes that has to be that He has to be in charge. He has to lead us. He has to guide us. You know, we talk a lot in Sunday school about making choices. Well, could we make choices that God wants us to make? Could we choose the right choices? Yes. This morning, God sees you. He sees your heart. He sees what you're holding up. He sees your life. And He wants you to know that He knows exactly where you are. And He's saying, the battle's not yours. It belongs to me.